So for the past one and a half years, Instagram has pushed their reels really, really strong. It transformed from being a photograph or photo platform to being a video platform. So what I've experienced so far is that the algorithm actually prefers posting reels, which means if you post reels, you will be pushed out to way more people, new people will discover you, and if everything goes right, you will also have way more followers. Since reels are very short, usually between eight to 16, maybe 20 seconds, you will have to fight for your viewers' attention. And there's one little trick on how to catch them in the first place. It's called speed ramping. And before we jump into Premiere Pro, I'll actually explain two ways on how to do it. The first way is super simple, saves you a lot of time. And the second way is the normal way to do it. it takes a little bit more effort, but if you know how to do it, you can actually also do more complicated speed ramps afterwards. So let's jump right into Premiere Pro. Everything was filmed with my H7S III or FX3, I can't really remember it, and also my RS3 gimbal and RS3 Pro gimbal. So the next thing is we need to create a sequence. So now that everything's set up, I'll explain the first way on how to do speed ramps. If you want to skip the first part, um, just go to this time. You just go to your clip, set your in point, and also your out point. Maybe I'll go here for in point and about here as an odd point. And I'm filming in 25 and 50 FPS because I'm living in a PAL region. There is PAL and also NTSC. So if you live in an NTSC region, just use 30 and 60 FPS. So for the fast way, you actually need to get my preset pack it's not the conventional preset pack because unfortunately uh, Premiere Pro doesn't allow to make presets on time remapping, but I've created a project file for you. So you need to go back into your sequence that you have created, press right click and nest the clip. Once it's nested, you can go to the other sequence which is called speed 100% or speed 50%. You go in here, press play. If you say, ah yeah, I like this one, I like this speed, you go and press right click, copy, go back to your sequence that you've created, press right click and press paste attributes. It's really important that you unclicked everything except for time remapping and then press OK. Render your clips so you can preview it easily. I've imported another clip, which is a clip of a Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. Well, this is my in point. And this is my out point. I drag and drop it into my sequence, then nest it. Once it's nested, I can go back to my speed sequences and copy it. So when you're doing this, I'd recommend you using shortcuts because it makes your life way easier and speeds up your whole process. Go back to my sequence, right click and paste attributes, press OK. And once it's applied, I can preview it. If you should ever see a black screen here, this means that your clip is a bit too short, which means you need to press into your sequence, adjust it, make your clip longer and then go back. And then you should be fine with it. So since this clip is ungraded, I'm quickly jumping into it and color graded. I'm always recommending using the S-Log free color conversion from Sony. You can get it on the Sony website and then use my LUT pack. In this case, I use the BB Black, adjust the intensity to around 45. And yeah, that's about it. So the last example for the fast way is with the speed 50% pack. For instance, I'm using this one just copy it, go back again, paste the attributes, press OK, render it, and then you should be fine with it. Oh, you see that it's super jittery here. 
That's because it's a 25 FPS sequence, yet the clip is 50 FPS. So what you need to do is you jump into the nested sequence, go to your sequence settings and set it to 50 FPS or 60 if you're using NTSC and then you can render it again and then it should be smooth again. Yeah, that's how you can do it if you don't want to get into speed ramps that deeply or if you can't achieve a super smooth look. Um, and now I'll explain everything in detail. Now you're doing everything by your own. And so here's the clip of the Porsche 918. It's a super fantastic car. And honestly, for 2013, it absolutely blew my mind. It's still one of the sickest cars I've seen so far. I start here and then go fast until here. And here I'll show the car in slow motion or in real motion, but it's way, way slower than the end, which is fast again. Probably I'll end up here. So I cut it and I've used a shortcut for that. I press the FX button. It's super important not to click into here, but the FX button, go to time remapping, and I probably want to stop over here. So I press control, I think it's control or command. I don't know, I'm using a third party um, keyboard right now. So you press until this arrow appears, not this one, but this one, you need to press onto this line, press click, then expand this, maybe like as far as possible to make it super seamless. Press onto this line, move upwards, maybe around 400, 500. I'm not using the same numbers all the time because it depends on how fast the movements were actually shot. Preview it, this one's nice. And then fast again. Uh, so I rendered the clip so it's not choppy and that's more or less it. So now I need to fine tune it, maybe do it a little bit faster. Also for the end, I drag the end a little bit further to the beginning. Render it again. So another way to get it even smoother is extend it until you see something like this. Press onto these handles and then you can move this to the side this is a super super fast transition this is a linear transition this is more like a bezier transition and then i'm previewing it again maybe i'll cut it here it's a super nice smooth movement and as you've seen i didn't use any warp stabilization afterwards also what i'd recommend you when you're doing speed ramps start the next clip with the same movement as the first clip. If you pan to this side, your next clip should start with a pan from this side, so it goes into this direction. Same thing goes for movements into the camera or out of the camera. The next clip should be the same. All right, so let's do one more speed ramp. Go to the FX. Nothing is new for you now, for now. Color graded. Leg mich doch am Arsch. A quick exchange. What I'm now doing is going from fast to normal speed and then go back in time. And now we got a quite smooth beginning. And now I'm pressing control and drag this to the side. And once you see this exact icon, you know, you go back in time. This one means that you're actually going backwards again. Still, you need to make a, a fairly smooth transition and then you go like minus, yeah. Let's try minus 400 once it's rendered. Okay, this part should be way faster. Make it a bit faster, cut it here, preview it and Basically here would be the transition to the next clip. So the last thing is a speed ramp which goes from fast to slow to fast to slow to fast. I like to do them. They're pretty cool. 
and they're not like also the basic speed ramps so let's get into it nest this once it's color graded start around here here it's slow here it should be slow and then fast again and slow again so what i like to actually do is to press these two handles against each other so there's more or less no space in between and make them fast so this one is basically really a, just a curve and then I'm going fast for the end maybe this one is already the end so I cut it here make it fast again Maybe I'll make it a little bit smoother. So the longer these handles are, the smoother the transition will be. And now we loop the playback. So that's the whole clip I made. Normally I'm editing to music, but in this case I didn't use any music because it wasn't necessary. Normally I try to cut to the beat, so I import the music file in first place and afterwards all the clips are speed ramped and this is a good example why it's important to use the same movements from the end of the clip and the beginning of the next clip here i'm going into this direction and here as well and this transition looks really really smooth yeah so basically that's how you do speed ramps there are two options as i've said before either save some time use my preset pack or do them all by yourself and you can even add more effects in after effects like motion blur so these are basically the two ways on how to do speed ramps i hope you liked it i struggle a bit to be in front of the camera but anyways i uh, really enjoyed to explain stuff and share my work with all of you and i hope you liked it and if you need any more infos just write in the comment section and I'll try to answer all of you. And I'm trying now to do even more videos regularly and the next video will be about gimbal movements, how to do them, how to film cars and how to get into the FPV mode of gimbals and how to perfect it actually.